let's say you want to break out of prison. I'm not going to ask how you ended up in prison. That's none of my business. We're just going to talk about getting you out of prison. You could dig a hole. You could steal a key from the guard because that's still a thing, right? Uh, You can get on parole for good behavior. Or you could quantum mechanically tunnel your way out. Uh Aha, this is a new thing, right? Because quantum mechanics is quantum mechanics. You're never exactly sure where something's going to be. And you've heard that maybe like little subatomic particles like electrons can tunnel outside of a barrier. And so maybe you could too. Maybe you just sit there and wait. And the next time you open your eyes, you're going to be outside of those bars. You're going to be free and clear. Why doesn't this work? It doesn't work because you're not a quantum system. You're not a subatomic particle. You're not an electron. You're a tiny bit bigger. But it is true for subatomic particles, for microscopic particles, for a lot of systems, they can do this weird trick called quantum mechanical tunneling. And it works because of the wave particle duality nature of the quantum world where you can't you just you just can't think of an electron as a particle stop like if i say the word electron and you think tiny little charge ball stop knock it off all right you just can't think of electrons as as particles no 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 we're, we're going to end that. We're going to stop that. You have to think of them as both particles and waves and not either or like sometimes particles and sometimes waves or Tuesdays and Thursdays, particles, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and then every alternate weekends like no, 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 no. Stop. Take a breath. You can only think of microscopic particles subatomic particles as both waves i just said particles didn't i okay just see even i do it even i do it it's so tempting to think of subatomic things as particles but they're not so we're going to work on this together okay they're both particles and waves at the exact same time the waviness the the way that the wave nature comes out is in you're never exactly sure when you go looking for an electron where you're going to find it. And the wave describes where you might find the electron the next time you go looking for it. So this wave, it's a mathematical function, and it permeates all of space. And you're just like, okay, where where the wave is really peaky, where it's really high, where the amplitude is high, that's where you have a good chance of finding the electron. Where it's low, that's where you have a low chance of finding the electron. Now check this out. This wave covers all of space. It's everywhere. It extends out to infinity technically the next time you go looking for an electron it could be in the andromeda galaxy why not its wave function extends out there now the wave function way out there in the andromeda galaxy is very 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 incredibly astronomically small So good luck finding the electron in the Andromeda galaxy when the last time you put it was here in this box, but it's not zero. And this is important for what we call tunneling, because if you put a particle in a box, or if you you put an electron in a box and close the lid, classically, according to classical physics, if that electron doesn't have enough energy to break through the barrier of the walls of the box, then it's never getting out, period, end of story. But quantum mechanics tells us something different. It tells us that this wave function extends to infinity and barriers, shimmeriers, doesn't matter. The wave function for an electron extends out to infinity. The 
locations of where it might be the next time I go looking for it, extend out to infinity. What barriers do, what walls do is they modify that wave function, but they don't get rid of it. They just modify it. They reduce the probability of finding an electron outside of the box, but they don't eliminate it completely. They just change the nature of that wave function. And the wider the box, the thicker the wall, the higher the barrier, the lower that probability goes. That makes sense, but it doesn't eliminate it. It doesn't make it go to zero. So from the electron's perspective, there's no such thing as inside or outside the box. There is just the wave function doing its thing. And the next time you go looking for the electron, it might be anywhere where that wave function dictates. And the next time you go looking for it, it could just be over here as easily as over here, over here, or here, governed by the amplitude of the wave function, wherever it, it is in space. But if there's non-zero amplitude outside the wall, then there's non-zero amplitude outside the wall. And the next time you go looking for it, the electron can simply be over there. Doesn't care about the wall. Doesn't care about the boundary. The boundary affects it, modifies the wave function, but it doesn't eliminate it. And so that's how tunneling works. The next time you go looking for an electron to see where that bouncing little particle is, don't forget about its wave nature because its wave nature tells you where it could be the next time you look. And the next time you look, it could be outside of the box. That's it. Now, why do, can't you use this? To break out of prison, it's because your wave nature is minuscule. Your wave nature is incredibly tiny. You you just don't operate by quantum rules. So I suggest just going for parole. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And go to patreon.com slash pmsutter. It's how I keep these videos going. I really appreciate it.